Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is a generational defining game, bringing the community together, having everyone super excited to see the next trailer and the next characters that are being released. This game bringing almost everyone who is a Dragon Ball fan or just a fan of good games together in excitement for this upcoming game. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is going to change the game, boys. Let's discuss. So first and foremost, we gotta talk about Tenkaichi 3, the game that literally walked so that Sparking Zero could run, or more like the game that ran so that Sparking Zero could sprint. This game is something special. Tenkaichi 3 has been a game that has been beloved by fans ever since it came out. The game captured a lot of young fans, me being one of them, early on in life with its fun gameplay, vast amount of characters, really really great visuals for the time, especially on the PS2, and it still holds up to this day. It's really good. Dragon Ball Tenkaichi 3, in a lot of people's opinion, is one of the best games on the PS2. For me personally, it is my favorite game. It is genuinely one of the greatest games of all time. Each title literally improves upon itself from Tenkaichi to Tenkaichi 2 which is a lot of people's favorite game because of the open world nature of it but me personally it's still Tenkaichi 3. I'm gonna be honest with you gang. Tenkaichi 3 literally has the best fighting system and it captured the world by storm. It cannot be understated how massive Tenkaichi 3 is. Not to mention that to this day it's still supported. There are still people going out of their way to make mods for this game to this day to include the updated characters, updated movesets to keep the game alive. Tenkaichi 4 has been around for a long time before Sparking Zero ever came around and it really goes to show how much of a cultural phenomenon this game was. It was everything that everyone wanted from a Dragon Ball game, not to mention even if you weren't a Dragon Ball fan, you enjoyed it because it was so much fun. And Sparking Zero seems to not only capture that original essence of what made Tenkaichi 3 great, but it seems to have gone further and beyond boys. I don't care how corny that is to say, this game is going to be generational. Now I believe that it's really Really important for a lot of people to understand why this game is such a big deal. Tenkaichi 3 was massive on the PS2 and people have been begging for Tenkaichi 4 ever since the end of the PS2 era. Don't get me wrong, there's been Dragon Ball games for years that have come out since but none have ever captured the imagination of fans and the Dragon Ball community like Tenkaichi 3 did and there were a lot. Dragon Ball Battle Z, Raging Blast 1 and 2, Dragon Ball Infinite World. It's my personal favorite of the Budokai series and is technically a Budokai 4 if you know you know. But let's continue, Xenoverse 1 and 2, Kakarot. There's always been Dragon Ball games. It's not like Dragon Ball went away. Hell, if you want to count the mobile games, the Dragon Ball Legends and Dokkan, which have been doing really excellent on mobile games, are really exceptional in that space. Dragon Ball has always been above and beyond type of game in whatever genre it's in. And the reason I want to point out why Sparking Zero matters, it is the same reason why Elden Ring mattered. Elden Ring was the amalgamation of every single Soulsborne game come together to make one perfect game. That's what Elden Ring was. It was a generational game. It was a game that was years in the making with systems built upon systems, different storytelling, merging together to finally make this one perfect game, Elden Ring. And the DLC seems to be doing a great job of revitalizing that game. And this for me is exactly what Sparking Zero is. Now, to be fair, Sparking Zero is only in development for five years. But the reason why I point out it's a generational game in the same vein as Elden Ring is that this is a game that has been built on for years. You can see that Spike Chinsoft not only knows what the fans want, but can see from their past mistakes where they went wrong. Raging Blast, for all intents and purposes, was a sequel to the Tenkaichi series. Almost everything that was in Tenkaichi 3 made it way in some way shape or form to Raging Blast. Now Raging Blast is a totally different game, it's a lot slower in its combat, they focus on a lot more different things in comparison to what Tenkaichi 3 was focusing on and although I love the Raging Blast series it never fully captured what Tenkaichi 3 had and what made it special and ever since then you could see every other game try to replicate what Tenkaichi 3 had in some way shape or form. Xenoverse tried, Kakarot tried, Fighters is probably the only thing that really came close but Sparking Zero feels like not only have they taken their own failures in the Raging Blast series and I'm not saying that Raging Blast is a bad game, I literally love it, but it's nothing in comparison to Tenkaichi 3, let's not lie to ourselves. Not only does it seem like they've seen the mistakes that they made in Raging Blast 1 and 2, but they've also seen the mistakes that other Dragon Ball games have made and decided to capitalize on that to make Sparking Zero. Sparking Zero, in my opinion, is a generational game because it took generations for them to finally not only come out with a sequel, because yes, Sparking Zero is Tenkaichi 4, it is 100% a sequel, slash 
Smash remake, but a sequel. And they have seen over the last decade what makes a Dragon Ball game great. But they have not only delivered, but they went above and beyond. They did not need to go this hard. At best, if they just made a solid fighting game system with Dragon Ball characters, that would have been good enough. But instead, they went above and beyond and added a story mode that allows you to play what if battles. They allow you to make your own what if battles in the form of rage. You can literally make a what if scenario. Literally what Dragon Ball YouTube has been doing for years. If you know, you know. If you're locked into the Dragon Ball community, you know that the what if stories go crazy. But they're allowing you to make your own what if story in the game and you can challenge other people. That is crazy. That is not something I ever expected them to do or even care about. Not only that, the destruction of the world, the attacks, every single thing about this game looks like not only was it well made, but they are really in tune with what makes a Dragon Ball game good. How one example is that Twitter was having a storm about the fact that there was no couch co-op in the game. And to be fair, that's how I played Tenkaichi 3 back in the day. So I felt a little sting, but it wasn't a big deal to me. But instead of just ignoring the community, what do they do? They go out of their way to make it work. Dragon Ball Spark and Zero has way too many systems in the game and way too much going on in the battles for them to have a proper co-op mode. So what they did, they compromised. They gave us a co-op mode in the hyperbolic time chamber or the rumors put it a time. That's the way I prefer saying it, but I know everyone says hyperbolic time chamber, so I'm just gonna say that. But I digress. They still did it. They didn't have to do this, but they did. And that's what makes Sparking Zero great. They don't have to do anything to make this game good. Having just the fighting system alone be great is all they needed, but no, they go above and beyond. And that is why this is a generational level game. This is the second coming. And I mean that in every sense of the word, Sparking Zero is going to be generational boys. Be ready. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero not only feels like such a love letter to Dragon Ball, but a love letter to Dragon Ball fans as a whole. They go out of their way to add small details into the game that don't matter in the grand scheme of things, but matter to us. A good example of this is Beam Clashes. Beam Clashes have been missing in Dragon Ball games for a long while. The last game that had it was Kakarot. But the thing with Kakarot is it was an open world action game. People wanted a Beam Clash in a fighting game. That's the same as Xenoverse Fighters. But no, they haven't had that in a long time. But there they are, giving it to us. The destruction. I know I mentioned it earlier, but I cannot be understated. The fact that there is this much destruction in a Dragon Ball game is wild. There's never been this much destruction in a Dragon Ball game. People have always talked about it and theorized that, oh, wouldn't it be cool if you could just destroy the world? Oh, wouldn't it be cool if you can throw your friend on the ground and then, you know, they leave a little crater there. That's where you threw them. Oh, that'd be so great, right? What does Sparking Zero do? They go above and beyond every single time. The destruction in this game is next level. Not to mention, they brought another feature back that hasn't been seen in a Dragon Ball game for a long time. I think the last game that had it was Fighters, but it has been missing for quite a while. And that is giving you the ability to destroy the actual world and change the whole map entirely. Again, Sparking Zero going above and beyond. It doesn't need to, but it does. This game is clearly made by people that care. Not only care about the game itself and care about Dragon Ball, but care about the fans. So often there'll be news in gaming spaces about developers that blatantly hate their consumers, that put scummy practices in their video games and make people hate the game, but they're addicted so they can't leave the game. So often you'll see developers that vehemently do not like the game that they're making, but they'll make it anyway for a quick paycheck and then the game dies. The franchise is destroyed because someone who didn't understand the franchise and didn't care came in and destroyed everything. It's happened one too many times, but Sparking Zero again above and beyond. Every single time, boys. Every single time. The fans want something, it's in the game. The fans have a complaint about something, it's fixed. The fans were talking about something for years and years and years, then theorizing how amazing it would be if it ever one day happened. And guess what? Here it is, finally happening. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero cares about its fans. It cares about the game. It cares. And it hurts my heart to say that game developers actually care about the game that they're making. They should always care, but it never feels that way sometimes. So when game developers actually actually do care and it's very obvious that they do, it's always heartwarming and it always brings me a form of happiness in some way, shape or form. Sparking Zero is that game. That's what I'm talking about. This shit means something to me, man. 
For years now, anime games have been trying to capitalize on the success of the Tenkaichi series. Ever since Dragon Ball games have come out, the anime gaming space has boomed. And ever since, every other anime games has tried to emulate what Tenkaichi 3 had. This is the same reason why a large majority of anime games are arena fighters, because that's what Tenkaichi 3 was. But they always were missing something. They always felt like they were never quite there. Anime games have been so formulaic for such a long time. It always felt like they were trying to capture the superficial natures of Dragon Ball Tenkaichi 3 without understanding why Tenkaichi 3 worked. Dragon Ball has always been about fighting, it has always been about characters, and it has always been about cool animations, cool attacks, and plethora of transformations. That's why Tenkaichi 3 worked as an arena fighter. The game itself worked with what Dragon Ball was always meant to be. But the problem is, not every anime game is meant to be an arena fighter. But the problem is, you get these developers that are still trying to capture what Tenkaichi 3 had without understanding that not every anime is meant to be this. And not every anime game is meant to be this type of style of game. And for almost a decade, I feel, ever since Tenkaichi 3, anime games have been on a downward spiral of being repetitive, boring, and just downright terrible. I'm sorry. And I'm even looking at Spike Chinsoft himself with that One Punch Man game that they made. That was terrible. It was garbage. Again, they didn't understand why people love these games. They don't. I'm sorry. Some games were just never meant to be arena fighters. It just isn't in the cards for every game. The only game that ever came close was the Naruto series. The Naruto Ultimate Ninja and the Naruto Storm series specifically. Naruto Ultimate Ninja came out around the same time as Dragon Ball Tenkaichi and the Budokai games. And it always felt like these two games were always side by side in one way, shape or form. Naruto and Dragon Ball as animes have taken the Western world by storm ever since they've released, with One Piece over the last few years really catching up and Bleach being beloved but never feeling like it quite reached the heights of Naruto or Dragon Ball. It always felt like it was a third or fourth place in comparison to Dragon Ball and Naruto. And the Naruto Storm series, why they worked so well was once again, they captured what people wanted in a Naruto game. There was a huge emphasis on the story mode in the Naruto Storm series when it first released. And not to mention when the story was over, there was a great battle system in the game for you to play. That's why people loved the Naruto Storm games. Again, it worked as an arena fighter because that kind of game catered towards that kind of anime fandom. Now, unfortunately, their latest game, Naruto Storm Connections, doesn't seem to be living up to the same heights as Storm 4, but it still seems to have garnered a community of its own. But I digress. All in all, Naruto was the only other game that ever managed to make the arena fighter work because that's what Naruto fans wanted. And once again, Sparking Zero is coming in to show anime games what it means to not only understand your target audience, but also go above and beyond, not to only entertain them, but to provide them with an experience that they will never forget. Sparking Zero is going to be generational. You might have heard me say that in the video a bit. I don't know if you did, but I'm going to keep saying it because that's exactly what Sparking Zero is. It is a generational defining game. I don't know when we're going to get another game like this. I don't know how many years it's going to take for a Sparking Zero 2. But as of the here and now, Sparking Zero is going to not only change the anime gaming landscape, but it's going to be one of the best games of this generation. It is going to be a generational defining game. Not only has this game united the entire gaming space in their shared excitement for its release, but it also feels like the passing of the baton. It feels like this is how we as kids were excited for Dragon Ball Tenkaichi 3, and we get to share that with the next generation. Everyone who grew up in the early 2000s understands how pivotal Dragon Ball Tenkaichi 3 was to not only a large percentage of our development, but just how near and dear to our hearts it was. Me being one of those kids, I played Dragon Ball Tenkaichi 3 religiously. I can't even begin to tell you how many times I had to buy the game again and again because the disc would get absolutely destroyed because of how much I played it. And now the next generation gets to know what that feels like. Not only do they get the best in the series, but they get to understand why we love the series. And it is such a special moment. It's not only us getting to experience the greatness of Dragon Ball all over again, but it's us getting to experience that again with the new generation. They get to know and understand why Dragon Ball has always been one of the greatest anime is but one of the greatest gaming franchises of all time. Dragon Ball is generational and when it releases the world will never be the same again.